Hello, I'm Councillor Hannah Gray, Mayor of Bromley, and I would like to welcome you to this commemorative service that marks the 76th anniversary of the liberation of the Jewish people incarcerated by the Nazi regime during the Second World War. We now know this as the Holocaust, which saw the slaughter of an estimated 6 million men, women and children, and maybe more. It's a real honour for me personally to take part in this year's Holocaust commemoration. Like millions of people around the world, I remember learning about the history and the atrocities of the Holocaust from a very early age. And we must ensure that future generations also learn the same lessons. As we can't meet in person, I'm moved and appreciate that you have taken the trouble to join us for this service of remembrance. I would now like to hand over to my chaplain, Major Angela Strickland. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you to all who are joining us to mark this occasion of remembrance. In 2012, my husband and I had the privilege of touring the Yad Vashem World Holocaust Remembrance Center in Israel. That visit left a lifelong imprint on our hearts of the importance of preserving the memory of those who died and those who fought selflessly to help people in need. It also impressed upon us the importance of never allowing genocide to be a part of world history again. As you may know, this week signifies the anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz concentration camp. Today, we remember those who were lost during the Holocaust, as well as the survivors and their loved ones still affected by the atrocities that took place. During our time together, you will hear from members of our wonderfully diverse Bromley faith community through singing, lighting of candles, reading of scripture, and words of remembrance. We hope to provide some comfort, not only to remind ourselves of the painful history brought about by the atrocities of the past, but to teach future generations that even through the worst of times, God provides hope for a better tomorrow. I would like to share a few words taken from Holocaust survivor Alexander Kimmel in his poem, The Creed of a Holocaust Survivor. In the love and compassion of the Creator, I do believe. I believe with all my heart that the Messiah and the kingdom of heaven will come when men will conquer his destructive urge and learn how to live in harmony with nature and himself, when all the preachers of hate will be silenced and man will become his brother's keeper when man will stop killing man in the name of God, and nation will not lift weapons against nation. When it will be, I do not know. But despite all the signs to the contrary, in the dawn of a better world, I do believe. In light of all that is going on around the world and in remembrance of the loss of millions of lives during the Holocaust, I echo the words of Alexander Kimmel. I too believe with all my heart that the Messiah will come. As we continue with our service, may we each strive to be a light in the darkness, never forgetting, but looking to the future with hope and to the dawn of a better world. Shalom Bimroma who Shalom
Part of the tradition associated with Holocaust Memorial is the lighting of candles, six candles for the six million Jews who perished in the Shoah. And in some places, as uh, we're going to do in Bromley today, a seventh candle for the rest. Uh, others, not Jews, others who perished in the persecution of the Holocaust, or perhaps symbolizing that seventh candle, the righteous among the nations, those who by their uh, great personal risk assisted and gave aid to their Jewish friends. As we come to light these candles, I'm going to read a prayer composed by Rabbi David Katz. Ribono Shel Olam, Master of the Universe, on this most solemn of occasions, we open our hearts, minds, and souls to you. As we remember the six million, the 11 million, the indifference and the evil. As we honor the heroes, the martyrs, the survivors, and the victims, we ask you to soothe our souls, to amplify our memories, to strengthen our resolve and to hear our prayers. We ask for your presence in our midst, for healing, light and love to soothe and ease our pain as we commemorate the horrors that were committed not long ago. Please, O Holy One, be gentle with our souls. We ask you to help us remember forever the stories we hear as tales of the atrocities are shared, as we re-encounter the unthinkable. We ask that these memories be strengthened and never fade in the hope that those who remember the mistakes of the past will not repeat them. Please, O Holy One, amplify our ability to remember. We ask that you strengthen our will, that you help us to ensure that the world does not again see such monstrosities. We say never again, and we dedicate ourselves to this principle, to the idea that justice does not allow persecution, that genocide shall not be repeated, and that vigilance is the responsibility of freedom at all costs. Please, O Holy One, make manifest our resolve that these horrors remain but memories. We ask that you answer our prayers. We pray that the call of evil falls on deaf ears, that those who fight for freedom and justice always prevail, that those who need protection do not become victims. We pray that the lessons we learn from this darkest hour allow all humankind to better itself and truly and nobly to embody the idea that we are each made in your image. We pray for the souls of the millions and millions of victims 
of this brutality. We pray that we honour their lives and their memories by observing this day and by doing everything in our power and beyond to make sure that no such shadow again darkens our world. Above all, we pray for shalom, for wholeness and peace, to be in our midst now and forever. Please, O Holy One, answer our prayers and bring us a world devoid of hatred, filled instead with peace. Kenya Hiratson, may this be God's will. And may we all say together, Amen. I'm Hugh Osgood, the Free Church's moderator and one of the national presidents of the Council for Christians and Jews. In the first lockdown, it was decided that we as national presidents should go on a pilgrimage together. Now, it wasn't exactly a pilgrimage and it wasn't exactly together, but it was a great opportunity to express our unity and to recognise some examples of light shining in the darkness. Our pilgrimage went like this. We were asked to identify a place that was a ray of hope and to walk there and then film ourselves describing our journey, expressing our gratitude and praying a specially written prayer. Between the 10 of us, we went to a whole variety of places. One of my fellow presidents went to a hospital. Another one went to an uh, elderly people's home. And I decided that I would leave my home in Bromley. I'd cross one of the footbridges that uh, goes over the railway between Bromley South and Shortland Station. And as I did so, I was very aware of the gratitude that we owed to those that were keeping the transport system running during the lockdown, and I made my way to St Mark's School, where I'd seen teachers coming in day after day to look after children whose parents were on the front line, and of course, putting themselves on the front line as they did so. Now, whilst I was describing my journey and expressing my gratitude and praying my prayer, the rabbi with whom I'd been paired was walking down a road in the East End of London in order to stand outside a Jewish owned convenience store where he stood and he expressed his gratitude to the shopkeeper who'd served that community for year after year after year. And the truth is that if it hadn't been for the lockdown, we probably would not have stood there saying thank you to the teachers and thank you to that shopkeeper. Now, our pilgrimages were nothing compared with the events that took place in the middle of the last century. But for Holocaust Memorial Day this year, we've been asked to think about light in the darkness. And as we look back with a determination not to repeat the pain, we also need to look back with a determination to recognise those glowing examples of hope. And I know that it's not just enough to remember. We did our pilgrimage, we 
clapped our hands for the NHS. We said thank you to the teachers and thank you to the shopkeeper. But really, there's an example to follow. And we need to stand together and let our light shine and follow the examples of those who've given themselves so unstintingly in recent months and also to remember those who gave themselves so unstintingly to shine as lights in the middle of the last century. Today on Holocaust Memorial Day, we remember all those who died in the Shoah, Jews and other persecuted groups. In their memory, we say the following prayer. Avinu Malkeinu, our heavenly parent, let there be perfect rest for the souls of the six million who died as Jews in the flames of the Shoah. And let there be perfect trust for the countless millions who died because of race, religion or nationality, political affiliation or sexual orientation. Hold them close to you forever. Seal their souls for everlasting life in the shelter of your presence, for you are the eternal home. Together we say, Amen. May it be your will. We also remember those who risked their lives to save the Jews, Hasidei Umot Haolam, the righteous among the nations. Creator of all, let there be perfect trust for the souls of the righteous, whose hands and hearts were open, whose self-sacrifice was limitless. They risked all they had to hide and rescue our brothers and sisters during the Shoah, as they gave shelter and care to others, shelter them in your presence, for they are holy and pure, and their light and their memory shines like the radiance of heaven. Hold them close to you forever. May they find a home in you, and may they rest in peace. Together we say, Amen. And we say the words of the Kaddish, Jewish prayer said in memory of the dead. Kaddish does not mention death, but focuses on the future, on the future when everyone will glorify God and express their commitment to building a world free of superstition, prejudice, persecution and discrimination. Yid gadal veyid kadash shemei rabah. Amen. Balma divra chirutei veyamlich malchutei. Bechayachon uveyomei chon. Uvechayei dichol beit Israel. Baagala uvizman karif. Vimru amen. Yechay shemei rabah mevarach. Lealam ulalmei almaya. Yid barach veyishtabach veyit paar veyit romam veyit nase. Veyit adar veyit ale veyit halal. Shmei di kutsha, brichu. Lela min kol birchata ve shirata. Tush bechata ve nechamata di amiran balma. Ve imru amen. Yechashlamara ba min shemaya. Ve chaim aleinu va al kol Israel. Ve imru amen. Ose shalom bim roma fchuya se shalom. Aleinu va al kol Israel. Va al kol ha olam. Ve imru amen. May the maker of peace in the highest. Bring this peace upon us and upon all people of Israel and upon all humanity. And let us say, Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. 
Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I would like to thank all of those that have contributed to this service of commemoration. Let us learn from the past and look forward to a brighter future. Please stay safe, look after yourselves and look after your loved ones.